the assignment. Monday is assignment day where my very special guest, former LA Times photojournalist and world travelled storyteller Marissa Roth sets a photography challenge or a way to think about your picture making for the next week. It's a challenge for, as we say, everybody. Whatever kind of photography interests you, whatever camera you hold, film, larger format, DSLR, mirrorless, compact, smartphone, it's really all about the picture that you see at the end of the day. As uh, always, there's a show page on the website, photographydaily.show, and I'd love you to share the pictures you make for this challenge, which I can then upload to the show page for this edition. And you can check back, of course, to see pictures from previous editions. And before we meet Marissa, my thanks to our wonderful patrons and MPB.com who sponsor this show, the number one company in the UK, the US and Europe, with bases in Brighton and Brooklyn and Berlin when it comes to buying, selling and trading used camera kit, quality used camera kit online. It's a safe place to do business with guarantees upon what you buy. After Marissa has offered up her assignment in a moment, let me borrow a few more minutes of your time today to get uh, semi-poetically excited about the forthcoming photo walk retreat, the third one. Right, before that, let's meet our guest for today, setting you a challenge for the new week. The assignment. So these uh, assignments that we have, I have a feeling, Marissa, that these, because you're quite detailed as a person, which I love. I love seeing that in, in somebody's work. And I see that often in, in, in your work. And I, um, you, you are, these three challenges, you are going to challenge us, without a doubt, because they're quite sort of multifaceted. But let's start with number one. And the words nature and meditation intrigue me straight away. Plus the fact you will need a camera and a pen so lots going on in this this first particular challenge but i'll let you set the assignment so a couple weeks ago i sent out a personal email blast entitled wind shadows and it featured two photographs that i took of a white wall with the reflection of a linden tree uh, sort of across the street getting buffeted by the wind. And I loved the cinematic quality of the shadows uh, on the wall. Mm. And the shadows were soft edged because the, the tree was quite at distance. And I just stood in one place practically and took many pictures over two days without having any clue what it was going to yield because when i saw them they came through and i i spied it the email out, out the corner of my eye. i thought oh oh it was one of those all oh! moments um because there's a great deal of simplicity in, in in that idea well i love i love your response to it and it was kind of a an emotionally charged weekend for me was it? and i was feeling sort of equally buffeted personally as it seemed the light and the air and the wind mm. you know that was our environment on that weekend so there was a real strange syn synchronicity my inner life so to speak and my external life mm. and so as always i took out my little contacts um camera my my sort of photographic sketchbook which was loaded of course with triax and just went out over two days and shot five rolls of film. Yeah. And so took them to the lab and it yielded quite a few images, but these were the two images that I selected. And concurrent to this and waiting for the film to be processed, I wrote a sort of short piece of poetic prose that, that kind of reflect, which I'm doing more and more of, that I felt I, I, I wanted to also give information for the viewer as to how and where and why I took these images. But for me also, it's now a secondary form of creative expression. So my assignment, number number one, <laughs> is to create a small sort of nature meditation, to go to one place, find a place, whether it's in nature or a pond or someplace where you are moved by the environment, mm. by the visuals, mm. by the light, by the air, whatever it is. And keep going back and keep going back at different times of day, in the evening, take a tripod, whatever your, your style of photography. But I want 
the photographer to be fixed in a way that I want the movement and the environment and the emotion to be what's in motion. So for you, that was two pictures, wasn't it? It was two pictures and then up to a, you said uh, uh, when we were speaking, up to a 50 word poetic description. Um, actually, I'd like them to, to, to have more pictures. So right. maybe up to six images. Oh, okay. um, the reason why that particular one um, struck me was uh, later on during the day, I was taking Sabark a lot for a walk and uh, we walk along the back by the canal and there was um they're doing some work on one of the locks and and the water has sort of caught um a tree which was probably the the light they were letting some water out through the main gate and a tree sort of branch got stuck in it and i've never seen that before and this thing is still there and i've watched it across the last week while they're doing this work on this lock and i took a load of pictures of the tree with the waters cascading off off it and that's what you mean wasn't it and I, i started to think what would i write about though what poem would i write about this sad lonely tree that's thinking what am i doing here (laughs) <laughs> and I, I kind of gave it a character, as so often I do. This sort of the, this lonely tree that's stuck in this these doors, thinking I just want to be a free tree. Am I sounding a bit daft? <laughs> No, no, but see, that's exactly my point, because in a way, isn't that a metaphor how we all feel at times, mm. you know, that we're, we're stuck, you know, that there's a, that our inherent nature, certainly with me, I mean, my inherent nature is to be more free spirited and out in the world or um, and yet, you know, my lifestyle all of us, you know, we are really bound in a way, you know, to computers and to our lives and to, you know, circumstances around us. So in a way, I see the tree as a metaphor, you know, it should be in the earth, growing alive, vertical, and yet here it was stuck, you know, on this, this construction bridge you know with water coming over it um so did, so my so neil did you go back and photograph it well i took a picture funnily enough um we we've been on holiday to the isle of Wight. i came back it was still there and i did take a picture of it i haven't written anything yet well but but, he, but you know but, but but the point is the writing should be it shouldn't have it, it's not a should no. it's an it's a it's just a, an offering of encouragement to put down thoughts, meditations. I mean, that was so when I write, you know, I'll often put down almost fragments of thoughts and then I let it percolate and then it kind of comes together or I change a word. Um, Like I had started mine by, you know, in a blustery autumn wind. And then I realized it really wasn't blustery that day. It was sort of gusty, you know, and then the gusty wind is what propelled the clouds. So, Again, there's it's not it's not binary. There's no shoulds. You know, this is poetic prose, which is sort of like the image. It's you know, a poetic kind of an image. It's a meditation. So let let's just uh, uh, bolt this one down. Then it's okay. six images, six images of something you see in nature that you will revisit over the next seven days and make pictures of again and again, or maybe just one more time, but. Uh, but but images that um, uh, that are of the same thing, and then how you relate to those six things with a small bit of prose doesn't have to rhyme. We're not looking for a limerick, but uh, but but some prose that that has a relationship to that thing that you have seen in nature. I've got that right, haven't I? Yes. Good good luck. <laughs> And that's our challenge for this week. I'll be delighted to see what you produce and would love to show them on today's corresponding show page on the website photowalk.show. As I mentioned a moment ago, the third Photo Walk retreat has now been officially announced and it's in once more. Drum roll, please. Amazing, wonderful, magical Scotland. Lend me your ears for a few moments so I can tell you more, as I did on Friday's Photo Walk show. And at the end, a few moments recorded from our recent trip to the Black Isle. The Photo Walk Retreat returns to Inverness. In Scotland, on the 10th to the 16th of September, slightly longer this time, 2023, I think of the Friday Photo Walk edition as a a safe, thought-empowering community as much a, a podcast. 
From shared photographic ideas and projects to conversations with those making pictures to mental well-being and mindfulness, this community celebrates the stories, the moments, large or small, and the feelings of those who take the time to write and teach and show and simply be there for each other. Photography is more than a swipe, I like to think. It's a community of similarly spirited, creative people for whom holding a camera brings a feeling of connectedness. A small group of us came together in 2022 on the Isle of Wight at the start of the year and then in September later on in Inverness for a, a week of being enveloped in making and talking about photos and now we travel once more to Inverness to stay on a working soft fruit farm with access to its own shop selling homegrown and local produce within reach of the most beautiful historic landscapes, towns and cities. The third Photo Walk Retreat celebrates the feeling the Photo Walk Show brings to our community. It's an opportunity to escape the noise, spend time with like-minded photographers, listen to photo talks, embrace new skills or challenges, and enjoy a break away as we encourage, talk and eat with, laugh with, and of course, walk with each other. We've added a day to the experience, and there are now five complete retreat days. Though you're invited to arrive early in the holiday, a day earlier on the 10th, and leave well breakfasted following the final day on the 16th, if you wish to enjoy a longer stay in Scotland's Black Isle near Inverness. A quick resume of the five days, although you can read them on the website, photowalk.show. Day one, we meet up with our darkroom guru, Matt Sillers, which was very popular last time. We prepare for a welcome nature walk where we'll be photographing with film cameras to make an art print the following day. Day two, we spend the day in the dark room producing a classic black and white art print from our nature photo walk the previous day. And whether you have experience in the dark room or not, it doesn't matter. We'll all be producing a print by the end of the day. Back at base after supper, we'll mount the prints for framing and then we'll discuss the exciting documentary assignment which happens on day three, the Wednesday, where we're creating documentary stories for a, a mock magazine feature together. We visit a woodturner who will share his passion for the craft and provide an excellent picture-making opportunity. We'll also be preparing the show for the end of the week, the special which you're invited to co-present. And we have a special speaker during the week as well, to be announced on that one. On the final couple of days, Thursday, we take a lock walk and work as a team to produce the Friday photo walk special. And then on Friday, we visit Cromarty with our cameras, tucked away at the eastern tip of the Black Isle with its narrow winding side streets and colourful fishermen's cottages, the site of historic sea defences. And then in the bay lies the imposing sight of oil rigs towed to Cromarty for refurbishment and refitting beauty, history and the unusual together. It's a break from the noise. Whatever it is, the way you tell your story can make all the difference. And we hope you'll be telling that story with us on the Photo Walk Retreat in Inverness, Scotland, the 10th to 16th of September, 2023. Oh, five places a few of them have already gone so go to photowalk.show the website to reserve your place so this is the first time you've ever seen a print come alive in a tray yeah it is assume it's going to come alive andrea oh but it is look yeah. okay so yeah magic it is It's a very delicate process as well, isn't it? Everything's, you know, it's not digging in, you're very, it's, they're very small movements, aren't they? Yeah, it gets more delicate. The more I come to the final shape, the more delicate it gets. What I find about wood turning is a lot about patience. Nothing is fast. The no. fastest would happen in wood turning is the wood revolving, and that's not me doing that, that's a leaf doing that. What are you aiming for here? And to, I know you're making a photograph of Angsker, but what's your, what are you doing with a light? Because he's standing in the dark and I'm wondering, because there's all these shafts of light coming in each side, so there's obviously a photographic plan going on here. 
Right. Um, so I don't need to care about the light coming in from the outside because it will be overblown anyway. But in here, there's enough light mm. for, for seeing him. The only thing that I worry is that uh, the rest of the light looks rather flat. So um, I might try a different position. What I would like to see is, is um, a craftsman uh, among his, his work and his materials uh, the place where he feels home. What's it like to have this on your doorstep? I mean, this what what we were half an hour, forty minutes drive from mm. from our, our base, and you've got this. It's amazing. Ah. Amazing. Am I allowed to say awesome? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> oh yeah, you should have seen his face. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. Uh, it's just you know, the the fact that we can just walk out the door, get in the car, drive for a short period of time, and then we've got lochs, yeah. mountains, beaches. Cliffs. Paul's making some portraits here. And I'll just say, look into the lens and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. I'll just take probably about three. Oh, that's fantastic. Hold it there. Because of the light that we're dealing with uh, today, uh, I've been concentrating on long shutter speed stuff to Ooh, get the really? nice milky water and try and pick on a static object uh, to make that stand out. Hopefully, I've got some successful ones. They look OK on the back of the camera, but that can sometimes be deceiving. What do you enjoy photographing? Definitely nature. Mm. Flowers, mm. trees. Um, and also people, if you're doing creative things like potters, artists, that kind of thing. Mm. So anything that's like creative as well as nature, really. Yeah, so I have my camera uh, set on my tripod right now. Yep. I'm going to set a an ND, a neutral density filter on it and hopefully get a really nice view of this island with the trees uh, going a bit into the clouds and there is a very nice hill slash small mountain uh, behind the island so I'm hoping to get a nice little movement to the water with the neutral density filter yeah. on and yeah hopefully make it a, a calm pristine landscape. Yeah. So you've got yourselves organized with your layout Okay, okay. Right, so I'm going to put the light out and welcome you to the dark room properly. Here we go, light's going out now. So welcome to the dark. So picking up on yeah. what um, Matt was saying about like visualising your image when you're out in the field, um, Patrick's uh, photograph that he developed in the dark room actually reinforces that from my perspective in terms of the fact of that it's such a beautiful print, but you have to visualise that when you're out creating your photo, making your photo. Even on your, look, on your mobile phone. Whew. Why am I bothering with my camera here? <laughs> Give us your lucky, you don't need that. <laughs> Let me have that. What do you think, everybody? Yeah, that's beautiful. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry, I want to go home. Are we there yet? All right. Well, look, I, I left this bit to now to tell you. Well, I brought the swimming costumes. <laughs> he wants to go for a lock swim. Go you would go in now. Well, I'll just go and get your cosy. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing you there. Music on the show today from artlist.io. Neil Ford, Emily Renier and Andrea Gilpin, thank you for your support work behind the scenes. And I look forward to photographing with you, hearing from you and talking with you on the Photo Walk this Friday. The assignment is a Loading Zone production.